This episode contains adult themes and is not appropriate for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, the world. This is They Will Kill, a true crime podcast. I'm Courtney Eck. And I'm Sadie Eck. And we are sisters, and we're here to talk about murder. And stick around for the end of this one if you want to hear a crazy story about a YouTube star who recently rehomed their Chinese adopted son. That's pretty fucked up and definitely relates to our recent episode about Hannah Williams. So stick around for that. But otherwise, take it away, Sadie. All right. We're going to talk about the stalking and murder of Shauna Grice tonight. Oh, God. Deep breaths already. Yeah. No. So Shauna Grice was born in 1997. She was the only child to her parents, Sharon and Richard. She grew up in Port Slade, England. Sharon described Shauna as beautiful, bright, bubbly, and kind-natured. She made friends easily and lived her life with much enthusiasm. She enjoyed spending time with her grandparents, who she was very close with. In a lot of cases, you know, I've complained before about not being able to find a lot about the victims. And this is sort of similar, you know, about her background anyway. But I did get on her Facebook page, which Mm -hmm. at least is still partly up. You know, I'm not obviously not friends with her on Facebook, but I could see her like swimming with dolphins and kissing one on the nose. And Mm -hmm. I thought that you would enjoy one of her Facebook. um, What do they call those? Posts. Posts. (laughs) Yeah, post said, quote, listening number two, listening to Justin Bieber one time with a thousand exclamation points. <laughs> okay, so. listen, I I made Laura watch seasons on YouTube and she cried. Oh, it's so good. I love him so much. Yeah. I do. I was listening to him today. Yep. So I, I thought of you when I saw that. I thought of oh. you and Shauna are kindred spirits. We're both believers. <laughs> In the summer of 2015, 18-year-old Shauna started as the office receptionist for Brighton Fire Alarms. This was her first staff position with a respectable company. She was planning a wedding with her boyfriend of three and a half years. His name was Ashley Cook. Uh, He goes by Ash, and she needed to save money. In true Shauna fashion, she quickly became friends with one of her new co-workers, 26-year-old Michael Lane. Lane was instantly attracted to the new receptionist and wasn't afraid to let her know his thoughts. Mm -hmm. She was flattered by the attention. Soon they started to see each other secretly, and over the following months, Shauna would agonize over which man she wanted to be with. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. In December 2015, Shauna finally decided to try to break things off with Lane. He wasn't happy with Shauna's decision and wanted to win her back. First, he tried a soft approach sending Shauna a bouquet of flowers for her 19th birthday. Shauna complained to her boss that the gift was inappropriate. Lane escalated quickly, and days later, Shauna discovered her car tires had been slashed. Conveniently, Lane appeared from nowhere and offered to change them. Oh no. A few days later, Shauna's fiancé, Ash, found his car had been keyed, deep indentations to the paint by a car key with a note stuck on the windscreen. Quote, Dear Ash, Shauna has and always will cheat on you. Happy New Year. Oh, God. On February 8th, 2016, Shauna made her first complaint to the Sussex police that Lane was stalking her. The police responded immediately, tracking down Lane and warning him to leave Shauna alone. He did, but not for long. On March 24th, late at night, after Lane showed up unannounced, Shauna fled her house to get away from him. Lane chased Shauna down the street, snatched her phone from her ear, and pulled her hair. She called police, but when officers questioned Lane, he showed them, quote, personal and embarrassing mobile phone messages between the two. What? Yep. Proof he said that they were still in a relationship. Uh Uh-huh. Because she had not told police that she was in an on-and-off relationship with him, it was Shauna, not Lane, who would be punished. What? Mm Mm-hmm. She was fined 90 pounds for, quote, wasting police time. You're kidding me. No. Meanwhile, Lane was arrested for assault, but was let go without being charged. Oh, no. The police told Shauna it was up to her to produce evidence she was being stalked. No. Yep. Shauna now believed they weren't likely to help her if she needed it. 
Fearing for her life, Shauna arranged a system where friends and family would contact each other if no one had seen or heard from her for a couple of hours. You're kidding me. No. Shauna now knew that Lane had saved her intimate and embarrassing messages to him and was ready to use them. Uh, He had shown them to the police, and she feared that he would share them with others. Oh, Jesus. After being fined, Shauna quit her job at Brighton Fire Alarms. Lane was suspended a few weeks later and resigned. But despite everything, Shauna stayed in contact with him. Why she decided to do this is unclear. Shauna was concerned enough about Lane's behavior to make repeated complaints to the police, but continued to talk to him and see him from time to time. Ah, oh, God. I mean, if I was in her position, I probably would too, because mm-hmm. you want to try to appease him, right? It's mm-hmm. like the police didn't help you already out of the gate. You know he has this embarrassing information on you. You cheated on your your fiancé. What else are you going to do? Right. You try to keep him happy and like maybe befriend him or something and hope that he will de-escalate. That mm-hmm. would be my... That's exactly the kind of thing that I do. I, yeah. Yep. And I think about, I was 16 and like, not totally similar, but like, like 16 and started dating here and there and a 21 year old. Right. I forgot about that. We didn't date, but sort of flirted and he got kind of stalkery and I didn't know what to do. You don't know what, you know, like it, I was sort of interested and I liked the attention, but it also felt really creepy and, you know, so I, that's what, when I was reading about this, I thought about that a lot, like understanding where she's coming from and. Yeah. Trying to figure it out and what are his yeah. intentions. and Exactly. Trying to mitigate yeah, the situation the best him, you can. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. Friends and family believe Shauna was struggling to manage an impossible relationship and said she was terrified by Lane's threats to commit suicide if she stopped seeing him. Mm. She continued to see Ash as well. The couple started planning their wedding in earnest and wanted to start a family soon after. They even went on vacation to Mexico with friends. So she was all sorts of tangled up. You know. yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, and you make a mistake. And at that age, that's when you cheat. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that's, I I had some questionable relationships with other people while in relationships when I was in my 20s. And it's just like, that's how you learn how to not do that. Right. You know, just like yeah. you said, you like the attention, you know, you're not necessarily with your soulmate or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, it's totally natural to do that. But most of the time you just do it and some hearts get broken and everybody learns lessons and moves on. Yep. Yeah. And that's exactly what should have happened for Shauna. Totally. On July 8th, 2016, Shauna made her final choice. She was going to stay with Ash. She told Lane to clear out his belongings. He'd left at her house. And while doing so, he secretly took her back door key. Oh, Jesus. He returned early the next morning and entered her bedroom. Shauna, who was only pretending to sleep, hid under her duvet when she heard footsteps approaching her bedroom door. Mm. She could hear a man breathing in her room, standing above her. After a few minutes, he left. Mm. Shauna looked out of her bedroom window and could clearly see Lane walking away from her house. Now, Shauna decided to do what Sussex police had challenged her to do, bring them evidence that she was being stalked. She called Lane and secretly recorded their conversation. Lane admitted to stealing the key and promised to return it. Mm -hmm. He returned the key later that day, but officers were waiting for him after Shayna had called them to report the break-in. He confessed, but wasn't charged with breaking and entering or with stalking. He was merely cautioned for theft of a key. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, that major charge, that'll really deter you. Right. What the fuck? I know. Over the next 24 hours, he bombarded Shauna with heavy breathing phone calls and secretly put a tracker underneath her car. (laughs) Shauna never knew it was there, but noticed in her rear view mirror that Lane was following her and turning up at pubs and clubs when she met friends. It's so stressful. It's stressful enough to go through a breakup. I remember the last breakup I went through before I met my wife and just seeing their name on the phone. Mm Mm-hmm gives you so much stress mm-hmm. right like, yes and them accusing you of being a horrible person and all the stuff that you go through yep when you go through a breakup it's so stressful it's so stressful and then amplify that times a bazillion yeah no that one of my breakups one of my hardest breakups i ran into him in the grocery store one day you know like a few months after yeah and we like turned corners into each other and it was like 
Devastating. Yes. Yes. And it he ruins wasn't your talking week. To me, I don't think. I mean, <laughs> if no. he was, he wasn't very good at it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. Quick story, and then we'll get back to it. Um, and my most recent ex is a very, very good friend of mine, and we laugh about this now, and we're very open about the fact that we had a horrible breakup. But I was in New York City in Union Square subway station, which is probably the bit. Bu- I mean, one of the busiest for sure mm-hmm. in New York City, and. <laughs> I'm just walking along and like three o'clock in the afternoon and I run smack into my ex who at that point was like a very recent ex. And we had just reached the pinnacle of the breakup where we were not speaking to each other like <laughs> the week before, just right. like five days before we were like, I hate you. You're, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And we run into each other in New York City. That's we were both so living crazy. in Portland at the time in New York City, just in this huge <laughs> subway station where we could have gone in any direction smack into each other and she's with her roommate who is a good friend of mine through her and her uh, two friends um, from New York City who I had also become friends with over the years and one of them is hard of hearing and right next to us is one of those like pan flute (laughs) player like (laughs) like the loudest like amplified in the subway station pan flute (laughs) right next to us and it was (laughs) like By far the most awkward interaction of my entire life. And also just like, why would that happen? And that poor thing, she says now that it absolutely ruined her trip. Like she was in New York on vacation. I was there on business. So I was like, whatever. And she (laughs) she said it just like fucked up her the rest of her time in New York. Yes. Yeah. And it's also just weird. Like that's, that's just really weird. Remember last episode where I talked about when karma's like fucked up mm-hmm. younger brother takes over and mm-hmm. it's just like I'm going to play this prank on them. That was a 100% one of those instances. Like yep. that's just so mean. It's so cruel that that yeah. happened. It's so crazy. So crazy. And then I stalked her and murdered her. Just kidding. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Back to this inevitable ending of the story. Um so we were talking about how we put a tracker on our car. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, every 10 days, late at night, Lane would return to change the batteries. Jesus. The no. Yep. She reported the phone calls to the police and was told that there was no further lines of inquiry and her case was closed. On July 12th, mm. Shauna called the police again to report that she was being followed by Lane. Mm. The police treated the incident as, quote, low risk, but told her the investigating officer would be made aware of the situation. Oh, great. Made yeah. aware. Mm-hmm. On August 4th, three weeks before she was murdered, Shauna spotted Lane loitering outside of her house again. She was with her friend Joanne this time, who said that Shauna feared police, quote, would not believe her if mm. she told them that Lane was still stalking her. Yeah, I bet. Mm-hmm. They just think she's a nuisance. Right. Shauna worried police would think, quote, she was blowing stuff out of proportion. (laughs) I know. Even after Joanne reassured her that they would have to believe her this time because Joanne could back up her story, Shauna refused to call. Mm. In total, Shauna called the police five times in six months to report Lane stalking. Mm. The police never took her seriously. That's a lot. Yeah. That's insane. Yep. On August 25th, 2016, Shauna failed to show up for work that morning. Her co-workers knew her situation and were immediately concerned. They called the police. And at the same time, neighbors also noticed smoke coming from Shauna's house. Uh, with the help of Ash's dad, Ian, they broke down the door of the home. Mm. Ash wasn't there, but somehow his dad was. Mm-hmm. Ian later said, quote, There was a haze and a strange smell making it hard to see and breathe. I was shouting, Shauna! When they got inside, they found the teenager's body face down on the bed. She was covered in blood. Mm. Her room was filled with smoke. Ian continues, quote, We looked at each other in shock and horror, saying, Oh my god, oh my god. Mm. Two fires had been set, one on the carpet and the other on Shauna's bed. A box of matches were found on the floor, and it looked like an, quote, ignitable liquid was used to start the fire. Mm-hmm. An autopsy showed that Shauna's throat had been slit, and she uh, bled to death. Jesus Christ. No. When investigators looked into Shauna's history, they quickly put Lane at the top of their list of suspects. Mm-hmm. CCTV footage captured Lane buying cans of petrol at a gas station the night before her murder. Another CCTV in the neighborhood recorded him walking towards Shauna's address and then visiting an ATM where, soon after Shauna was murdered, 
he used her credit card to withdraw 60 pounds from her account. Every time we cover a case like this, I'm just so struck at the... Brazenness? Yes! Mm -hmm. Like, you live in the UK. There are cameras... Everywhere. Everywhere. Yep. And then you, like, premeditate it, go out, buy the gas... How the fuck do you think you're going to get away with that? Okay, first of all, you think you own this woman who doesn't want you. Mm -hmm. And so you just need to, like, extinguish her. Right. Because you don't get to have her. And then you just openly commit this crime. Right. It's so insane. Yeah. It's... <laughs> I will never get that. I, I totally agree. I don't... It, not that it feels better when it's, like, well-planned or, like... No. You know, it's all so senseless, but I don't understand. Do they think they're going to get away with it? Well, probably. I right. mean, you know, it's but, a, it's like really just an illustration of privilege, right? Yeah, like right. you are probably going to get away with it or there's right. a better chance that you'll get away with it right. because and you're a saying, white dude. And the cops have let you get away with it this far mm -hmm. because you're, you know, who you are. Yep. And they're like, oh, boys will be boys or whatever. It's just mm -hmm. a lover spat. She's making it up. They've mm -hmm. already like told her that the burden of proof was on, on her mm -hmm. and not on him. Emotional teenager fuck yeah god the police brought lane in for questioning the day of shauna's murder he initially lied to police about his whereabouts that day and denied any involvement in the murder he eventually changed his story and admitted that he'd gone to shauna's house that morning uh, but he claimed that he'd found the door open so he went in and then found her body in the bedroom mm, yeah right yep he claimed that he panicked and then left the scene without dialing 999, checking Shauna's vital signs, or telling his family what he'd found. Mm -hmm. He said that he only kept quiet about what he'd seen because he was afraid of being accused of her murder. Well, because you did it, so. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when asked about why he bought a can of gasoline a few days before her murder, Lane told police that he was distraught over the breakup and planned to kill himself by setting himself on fire. Cool. Cool, dude. Mm. Yeah. That's good. very dramatic. Yeah. So when asked about using her ATM card, he said that he left her apartment and didn't want to believe what he saw. So he went to a nearby gas station to check a lottery ticket he'd recently bought. That's logical. It's perfectly, mm -hmm. perfectly logical response to finding your loved one dead. Right. While there, he decided to use her ATM card to pay himself back for gifts that he'd bought her when they were dating. Also, mm -hmm. yes, that's fair. Right. It's legal. It's moral. Everyone shows it. their grief in a different way. <laughs> it's a piece of fucking shit. With more than enough evidence against him, investigators arrested Lane for the murder of Shauna Grice that same day. Fucking good. Yep. In the lead up to the trial, it was discovered that Lane had a long history of stalking women. What? No. How old was this guy? 26. Jesus. In 2010, six years before Shauna's murder, Lane was arrested over claims he groomed a 14-year-old girl while volunteering as a scout leader. No. He was never charged or prosecuted over the incident, but police put a marker on his record. Not this a big enough one. Like, well, and it's just like, stop putting marks on his record. You got yeah. like... Yeah. You punish somebody for grooming a 14-year-old. You punish them very hard for that. Very swiftly. That's a swift punishment. Yes. There's no gray area when you're no. grooming 14-year-olds. They are children. They are children, and grooming is predatory and yes. fucking awful and life-ruining. Yes. And your life should be ruined for yes. ruining a 14-year-old life. Period. Right. That should be exactly what the statute says when you go <laughs> to the law books. It's like, oh, okay, no, no, gray, no, no loopholes? Cool. Cool. Okay, done. Fuck. It appears that the warning note wasn't taken into account years later when Shauna first reported him to Sussex police. Despite the arrest, Lane was allowed back into the scouts as a volunteer assistant leader in 2015. Oh. When records of his previous membership were missed during the application to rejoin. Uh. Yep. It also came to light that he used, quote, youth movements, which appealed to young women and girls to allow him access to victims and to attempt to meet sexual partners. Fuck. Investigators list him targeting 12 other young girls and women between 2006 and 2016, but none of them reported him to police at the time. No. There are accounts of him being, quote, very controlling in another relationship, bombarding women with explicit text messages and pictures of himself. I'm guessing it's a dick pic. I think you're probably right. 
pestering them to sleep with him for money, loitering outside their homes, harassing two women he met in a pub, and sexually assaulting another. What an absolute fucking creep. Yes. To the max. And what an absolute fucking creep of a system that allows men to get away with shit like this. Yep. And kind of encourages them to get away with shit right. like this. And encourages women to be quiet because they're not going to be believed. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Police previously confirmed several women came forward to report Lane after the murder, but none of these cases resulted in prosecution. Mm. Because why should they? I mean, right. come on, you guys. God. I know. Makes me so mad. So fucking mad. After Lane's conviction, one of the women, Ellie May, spoke out claiming he bothered her over a period of 10 years. Oh, no. During which time he sent pictures of her bedroom window and texts saying he was watching her before she saw him parked outside her house. For 10 years. 10 years. That's that's a life ruiner right there. When he's 26 years old. I mean, that's like his half of his whole life he's stalking this woman. Jesus Christ. A friend of Lane's also came forward to tell investigators that she and Lane went to a pub together a few nights before Shauna's murder. She said that Lane was upset and depressed about his breakup, and he told her that Shauna would, quote, pay for what she had done. <laughs> a member of the public who saw Lane in press reports about the murder witnessed him trying to hide shoes in a field. Uh, police found the shoes. They were covered in Shauna's blood. In March of 2017, Lane was brought to trial for Shauna's murder. He pled not guilty. The trial lasted two weeks, and after hearing the evidence against him, the jury easily found Michael Lane guilty of murder. Oh, thank God. I thought you were going to be like, and they was a hung jury. Oh, no. Thank nope. God. During the sentencing, trial judge Justice Green told Lane... Quote, everyone in this court heard Shauna speak when the recording of her conversation with you about the theft of the key was played. We heard the clear tones of a confident and vibrant young woman. You robbed Shauna of her life, and you have caused grief untold to her family and friends. They have attended this trial together to provide support to each other, and they've had to sit through harrowing and demeaning evidence about Shauna's love life and her death. Mm. No sentence that I can impose can ever begin to compensate them for their loss. Mm -mm. He continued, quote, It is undoubtedly the case that this was a complex relationship. On the one hand, Shauna was sufficiently concerned about your conduct to make repeated complaints to the police about you. But on the other hand, she was also attracted to you. Because of her age and inexperience of life, Shauna did not know how to deal with you. Mm -hmm. And tragically, when she sought help from the police, she received none. At shortly after 7.30 a.m., you went into Shauna's bedroom, knowing that her housemates had left for work. We will never know for certain what then passed between you and Shauna. At about that time, a neighbor heard a raised female voice coming from Shauna's house, but there was no screaming or shouting. Shauna knew her assailant, and it was you. You took a knife, almost certainly from the kitchen, which has not been found, and you slit her throat. In all likelihood, you did this from behind her. She would have been conscious for some time before she died, slumped by the side of the bed. Mm. Having killed her, you searched for her bank cards, and then, to add insult to injury, you headed to the nearest ATM. This was the time when Shauna's bank card was used to steal her money. You knew the PIN number. Having stolen Shauna's money, you purchased some water. You returned to Shauna's house because you needed to destroy the evidence of the murder. It is probable that at some point you transferred petrol into the water bottle. You can be seen on the CCTV at about 8.22 a.m. going back into Shauna's house carrying a bag. You re-entered the house with the petrol and you moved Shauna's body onto the bed. You doused the floor and the bed with petrol and you ignited the fire. You left, closing the door behind you. The fire quickly took hold and because it was in a confined space, the heat built up rapidly to a high temperature. Shauna's body was burned, but the oxygen in the room soon became depleted and the fire extinguished before the body and the room burned down. All of the evidence was destroyed. This was a cold-hearted murder. I have not detected in you any appreciation for the devastation you have caused to Shauna's family and friends, nor have I detected remorse. Insofar as I have detected emotion in you, it has been a determination to do all you can to protect yourself, and you have been the one person you have felt sorry for. Mm-hmm. The judge then sentenced Lane to 25 years to life in prison. Good. Um, so a study was done to look at the correlation between stalking and murder. Mm -hmm. 
and it was found that stalking was present in 94% of the 358 cases of murders that they what? looked at. You're kidding me. No. And stalking behavior was identified in 9 out of 10 murders studied. Holy shit. I mean, I guess that makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very rare that somebody just kills somebody. Right. There's a staggering correlation between the two crimes, but despite the shocking findings, stalking offenses are often not taken seriously enough by the authorities mm. or acknowledged as a precursor to violence with potentially fatal consequences. Yep. Forensic psychologist Carrie Danes said, quote, as a woman, you are more likely to be killed by a current partner or an ex-partner, but 94% of all murders of women are preceded by stalking behavior. Mm. Not all stalkers are killers, but most killers are stalkers. Right. It's terrifying. It's so terrifying. After Shauna's murder, Sussex police apologized to Shauna's parents and referred themselves to the Independent Police Complaints Commission, <laughs> which launched an inquiry into the way police handled Shauna's stalking allegations. In late April 2017, the Sussex police accepted six recommendations from the IPCC to improve the way the force dealt with stalking. Mm. The recommendations included improved training, data systems, and making use of relevant information on stalking. Mm -hmm. The IPCC Associate Commissioner Tom Milson said that the Sussex police had taken a positive response to the recommendations, and he said that, quote, stalking and harassment are serious offenses, and in certain situations, such as those involving Shauna, can have tragic consequences. Good for them for fucking doing something about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hope they actually did something about it, but mm. <laughs> sounds like they did. You know what uh, I mean? Well, they, yeah, I'll keep reading. <laughs> yeah. No. I'm sorry. I want to believe that the UK is a magical place where right? women are safe. No. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Detective Superintendent Jason Tingley of Sussex Police said that the additional training was already being provided. And quote, we have improved our understanding of what stalking and harassment is and what our response should be. Two years later, in April 2019, a follow-up report concluded that stalking and harassment offenses were not being properly investigated by the Sussex police. <laughs> I know, and I felt the same way. I was excited that they actually, like, okay, let's fix this problem. Right. And then I was really excited, and they were like, did a follow-up report? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's just not really how right. it seems to work here in the United right. States. No, you're like, oh, we're going to, don't work. look over there. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. But unfortunately, you know, Ugh, nothing's being done. God damn it. Yeah. It stated that a training program introduced after Shauna's murder to help staff understand and, and identify stalking, quote, was never fully completed. Mm -hmm. Most investigating officers had received no training. God. Not enough victims were being referred to support services, and there were concern over online stalking. Mm-hmm. Police forces nationally were not using the authority under their new stalking laws to search suspects' homes, making investigations less thorough. Mm -hmm. So they'd put new laws in place allowing the authorities to do more, and they just weren't. Right. Still just weren't. If they're, if they're not trained to identify it, they're mm -hmm. not going to take it seriously. They're just right. like, oh, it's just that hilarious behavior that goes on between couples who are having a row. Mm -hmm. Injunctions were not being used, so victims were not being properly protected. The National Police Chiefs Council was called on to make sure police forces around the UK make improvements and that a single definition of stalking be adopted by police forces and government departments. Mm -hmm. And that happened, you know, about a year ago. And right. so I, I didn't see any updates if they've done another follow up to check in and see if things are happening. Right. Um, it was also announced that three police officers connected to Shauna's stalking case would face disciplinary action in May of 2019. Wow. Two officers, one retired, faced gross misconduct proceedings. Another officer faced internal misconduct action. Officer PC Mills resigned from the police force before his disciplinary hearing, but he was still required to go through the process. Mm -hmm. One allegation against Mills was that he failed to, quote, adequately investigate allegations of harassment and stalking. Mm-hmm. And that he, quote, failed to contact Miss Grice or update her regarding the reported incident. She was not called back and a few days later received a letter stating that the, quote, case was closed. Mm -hmm. Friends said that she was angry and could not believe the police had dropped the case and had not reported further instances of stalking as a result. Mm -hmm. It was the last time she contacted the police before Lane murdered her. 
When questioned, PC Mills said that he was alarmed by some of Lane's behavior and said that his failure to properly question him was an oversight. A police force disciplinary panel ruled that PC Mills's failings amounted to gross misconduct and that had he not resigned, he would have been dismissed from the police force. Well, I mean, that's something. Mm-hmm. I, did, I mean, I feel ridiculous being like, oh, well, they held him accountable for his actions, but mm-hmm. that is something, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's it would never happen over here. Never no. happen in the United States. No, especially not for stalking. Like, we no. can't hold people, police officers, accountable for murdering unarmed I mean, men people in, the, of color. in public. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> That's a whole other thing. But it's true. I mean, it's yeah. like, it's sad that I'm like, oh, good for them. Hooray. Somebody got, right. you know, when it should just be the way it fucking is. Yeah. Yeah. Former PC Trevor Godfrey, who retired from the force two years before his hearing, was found to have committed some misconduct by not investigating Shauna Grice's complaints of harassment, but that he had not committed, quote, gross misconduct. So... Slightly so, better misconduct, not the right, worst. Right, he did kind a little bit of misconduct, but, but not, not a gr- lot of the it. gross kind. Right, yeah, got it. He had issued Shauna with a warning and a fine for wasting police time, and decided to take no further action against Lane. So he was the one that right fined her. Yeah, I would say that that's pretty gross misconduct. Uh, me too. Godfrey stood by his decision when giving evidence to the panel. He told the hearing, "Quote, absolutely, she did waste my time." I arrested someone as a result of her evidence on a false allegation. She had committed a criminal offense. What the fuck, dude? Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. Do you want to hear what else he had to say? Oh, no, kind of not. I know, he's fucking dick. (sighs) Yeah. He added, quote, she lied to police three times. It was only right that I advised her she cannot keep lying in police statements and getting people arrested for it. That's psychotic. Mm -hmm. So many people do that now. Mm -hmm. And it's... I really hope that that stops happening. Right. Because it's psychotic. Right. Yep. That's all I have to say. I mean, And somebody can still stalk you when you're in a relationship with them. An on and off again relationship. Like, uh, like who is raising these people? Yes. How do they not know that? Your intimate partner can rape you. They can stalk you. Yes. All of the bad things can happen to you, despite the fact that you're willingly, quote, unquote, like consensually in this situation with them. She didn't tell them that they were in a relationship because she wanted them to take her seriously. And it backfired. And it's bullshit. Oh, my God. It took Officer Godfrey only 84 seconds during a phone conversation with Shauna to decide that she was wasting his time. I'm going to fucking despite this virus i'm flying to the uk to track this guy down (laughs) give him a piece of my mind yep damn it i know i know it megan read the story and she was like i'm almost more angry at godfrey like seriously you know he's a monster wrapped up in good guy's clothing a hundred percent i could not agree more with that it's like yeah. you are the you are the reason that this guy thinks he can get away with it because yeah. if you you let him get away with it and yeah. if there were more of you in charge or like along the way, he would have gotten away with it. Yep, yep. And then with years of time, you know, years worth of time to look back on his actions, yeah, and realize that he made a mistake. He still so, nope. I I'm right. She mm-hmm. lied, so she mm-hmm. had to suffer those consequences. Mm-hmm. I d- I just do things by the book. It's not on me that she died. Like I hope you can sleep well at night, Mister Godfrey. Oh, I hope you get a visit by Karma's fucked up little brother. Who just like, <laughs> actually, just regular Karma, just big yeah. Karma, because he's way worse. Mm-hmm. But yeah. God damn it! So Shauna's parents, these poor people, said, "Quote." We can barely believe what we have witnessed these past two days. The panel allowed a wholesale character assassination of our daughter, who is obviously not here to defend herself. Yep. They went on, quote, Godfrey's testimony only proved his discriminatory attitude, even accusing Shauna of coercing Lane. We can barely believe what we have heard. This misconduct charge is a joke and the hearing a sham. Had Godfrey not retired, he would be allowed to carry on serving as a police officer. Yep. They continue... Quote, what message does this give to other officers? Even more importantly, what message does it send to victims? We are disgusted and feel thoroughly let down by the process. There is no justice. Yep. 
Her parents continue, quote, We're very relieved that the man who killed our precious Shauna, our only child, will serve a long and deserved prison sentence. We brought Shauna up to respect authority and to always respect the law. We firmly believe Shauna would be alive today if Sussex police had acted to protect Shauna on the many occasions that she complained about Lane rather than issue her with a fine for wasting police time. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's what struck me. I mean, it always strikes me, but that was struck me when you're talking about it earlier. It's like this man takes everything from her and then the system takes the rest. So it's yep. like they just take it all. They, mm -hmm. uh, you have to like reveal everything about her. Yep. All of the darkness inside of her, all of her intimate and embarrassing secret things have yep. to come to light yep. for them to yep. fucking believe it. And it's just... How do we get some cops and politicians to make a good guy force? <laughs> Here, <laughs> like, let me t I'll give you one more paragraph. Oh, my maybe God. Maybe it'll help a little bit. Please. Give us a place to start. Okay, good. Not really. It's, we're, we're pretty much still, we're still screwed. Too. But... So Rachel Horman, who is the chief of media for the National Stalking Advocacy Service in Paladin, argues that a culture of misogyny in the police force is to blame. She suggests this needs to be acknowledged before it can be dismantled. Yeah. She said, quote, nearly every case I deal with, a victim has reported stalking to the police and they are met with an attitude of disbelief. The biggest yeah. problem, in my view, is a culture of misogyny in the police. This needs to change and it has to come from the top. It needs to start with an acceptance from police that it exists and that until they go on record and do that, they can't make commitments to tackle it. Yep. Yes. A hundred percent. Yep. And that is the awful case of sweet, sweet Shauna Grace. Can we seriously start a good guy force? There's got to be I, enough good guys to start a good guy force. Yeah. I'm positive of that. Yes. It's like, why do we let the fucking sociopaths win all the time? Know. Well, because all they're the really time. good at it. They're monsters. Right. Like they right. seize power and then they don't let it go. And then they mm -hmm. just victimize all of us all the fucking mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you saw that tweet by AOC yesterday or the day before where she was like, straight up, politicians are afraid of the police force. Yep. They're too powerful. And I was like, that's good for her. I mean, that's a terrifying thing to say publicly. Yeah. But I know it's true. You know, it's got to be true. It's like yeah. if the politicians, if the bosses of the police are afraid of the police, like how do we, what do we do? It's got to come from other police members, right? Yeah. And people within the system. It has yeah. to. Like the people are outraged. And we protect them because they're supposed to be the good guys, right? right. So like you said, Shauna's family was like, we raised her to trust authority. Right. You know, we're all raised that way until recently. So we need another version. We need mm -hmm. the system to hold it. Hold it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's got to come from there. I know that there are good guys. I'm positive of that. I know them. Of course. <laughs> you know? of course. Yeah, of course there are. And it's also making it so much fucking more dangerous for them and so much harder for them to do their mm -hmm. job. And there's so much hostility. It's yep. like a powder keg. It's just going to fucking explode. Yep. And like if you just from within, like release the valve a little bit, guys. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could like turn around this barge of awfulness that's mm -hmm. barging toward God knows what, a revolution. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's terrifying and heartbreaking and awful. And fucking stop it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. We got to teach our, our <sighs> little boys to feel their feelings and yes not take what isn't theirs that's exactly Start there yes yes you have uh, to learn to share you have mm -hmm. to learn how to not be afraid uh, yeah and that's what i keep saying like all this shit in the news about poor george floyd and amy cooper is that her last name yeah fucking monster it's like who mm -hmm. raises these people how are we still here right, right. like how are we still here it's just right. Uh, I know. Are people being born without fucking hearts, without empathy? Just be all the time? <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> well, I think they're just being raised to take what they want. Yeah. It's so true. It's me first. You know? Yeah. Yeah. As long as I'm protected, as long as I'm safe, that's what matters. And nothing right. else matters. And that's not okay. 
it's the furthest thing from okay. Yeah. If we it's, don't raise our children to have empathy for others, we're totally screwed. Yeah. I really, 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 really hope that millennials and younger generations yeah. are doing it differently. I think they are. I really think they are. I just think we have this like stronghold of like Gen X and fucking boomers mm -hmm. who were like death rattle on their way out. Like, no, it's still ours. We have mm -hmm. to keep it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they have all the money and they have all the power and they're fucking awful. Yep. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh. Yeah. Speaking as a like kind of Gen Xer, I mean, I'm a zennial or whatever. Like I'm that mm -hmm. generation in that's in between, yeah. but I think we all identify a little bit more as Gen X. Yeah. We have yeah. to stop doing that. And I really please millennials. You're our last hope. Mm -hmm. You have to fucking vote and you have mm -hmm. to, when you're all starting to have babies now, raise those babies right no because the shit cannot go on no and those of us who have the power and the control like i said last time you need to fucking talk to each other white people mm -hmm. you need to vote and you need to donate your money whenever you can to people who can help i mean there are plenty of other things you can do but those are my three calls to action because those are simple actionable things that you can do do it people do it people <laughs> Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> oh, it's been a hell of a week, you guys. It's been an awful week. And I, w I won't cry, but I do want everybody to know that we're in solidarity with you. And mm -hmm. it's hard to know what to say because nothing, there's just nothing. There's just nothing. No. But we are doing the work and checking in with our people who are suffering. And we love you. Mm -hmm. And we'll figure it out somehow i don't know how but we will fucking figure it out yep also don't adopt babies from china <laughs> put them I'm on sorry, your youtube sorry. channel <laughs> make thousands of thousands of dollars off of them and then give them away yep this occurred recently a youtuber what's her name micah stoffer got this baby she had a i think she had three kids biological children before that made this big fucking to do about how they're going to adopt a baby from China. And then the agency said that this baby that they had was special needs. And they were like, we weren't really down for that. But then quote, God softened our hearts to it. Mm -mm. Uh huh. And so they adopted this baby and they like just blasted the whole process on social media and in magazines. And they had like all these sponsorships and all these partnerships and blah, blah, blah. And talked about how, you know, like actually gave advice in People Magazine and other publications about how to parent a special needs adopted child and, you know, pos position themselves as experts. And then <laughs> one day people were like, where's, what did they name him? Huxley. Where's Huxley? Oh, I know. Of course they named him Huxley. Of course they did. Where's Huxley? And there's this whole campaign, like they started a hashtag and everything to try to figure out what the fuck happened to this kid. And they finally admitted that they rehomed him. Mm -mm. Yeah. I found this out because my friend posted about it on Instagram. And I asked her if I could share her words because she is, she was adopted internationally and she's been very public about her experience with kind of coming to terms with all of it as an adult. And she tried to find her birth family and she couldn't, and it's been really devastating and really traumatizing. So she posted this story and then, course had some choice words and I asked her if I could share them and she said I could so she said you don't get to crowdfund to adopt then monetize off of your kid then give them away when you can't or won't learn how to change for an autistic child not okay children are not goods and exports p.s. this is another example of white privilege international adoption creates a quote savior complex for white parents Repeatedly pointing out that your child is Chinese or any other race while speaking about them makes it obvious you want the public to know the, quote, good deed you did. Mm -hmm. Referring to their arrival as a gotcha day implies that they are like a pet. Treating them differently than your white biological children implies that you don't see them equally. Transracial adoptees are not exports. Stop adopting internationally. It is mentally and emotionally traumatizing to a child. And she said... My parents are good people, but they've repeatedly reminded me throughout my life that I, quote, wouldn't be alive, 
that I'd have, quote, died in a ditch on the side of the road without them, or that I should be grateful, or that I, quote, owe them. This is an example of white privilege and savior complex. Children do not, quote, owe their parents for existing or being, quote, saved. Hmm. So I only learned about rehoming adopted children through your episode on Hannah Williams, and then to have it just, like, immediately come up like that. That shit's insane, man. It's just yeah. insane. So don't do that. Yeah. If you're going to adopt internationally, you need to do a whole heap of research. You really need to make yeah. sure that's what you're going to do. And if you're going to adopt a special needs child, which please, by all means, adopt special needs children, please do it. But not if you are doing it because like, you think it's some sort of godly savior thing that you're doing and right. you're not prepared. You're not actually prepared to adopt a child with special needs. Um, and their excuse, of course, was that it was too hard on their previous children. And it's like, of course it is. What do you think it's going to be? Yeah, yeah, of course it is. It's like our friend, our, the kid we took care of in the group home, who was rehomed to a group home because they had 15 other foster and adopted children. It's like, if you're going to take on a child with special needs, make sure that you can accommodate for them. So yep. lots of soapbox today, but <laughs> it's yeah, been, that, it's been yeah. that kind of week. <laughs> it's just like, it's just a kind of week where you turn around and you're like, father fucker. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> really? This is the world we live in? God. Uh-huh. I know. And that train. Yeah. Yep. That's the, that's that the, tr- this is what it's going to take. Huh? I was the train of say, change. <laughs> I was going to be really like deprecating and be like, that's a train of white privilege and awfulness is barreling toward its <laughs> inevitable collision mm. with karma. And we all have it coming. <laughs> I was trying to turn it around. <laughs> I would like to turn it around. You are right. I, it's a train, train of change. <laughs> the train of change of positive change and equality and fucking uh, white people getting their heads out of their asses and sharing and taking care of other people and uh, yep. et cetera. There, there we are. There we are. We love you guys so much. Uh, what else? Uh, we are getting ready to do another giveaway for reviews. Yes, that should probably happen. This will post on Saturday. I think I'm going to do it on Sunday. I haven't yeah. really posted more about it on Instagram because it just feels sort of weird to be like, oh, giveaway. Clothes. Yeah, the world's mm-hmm. on fire, but do I really want my clothes? Um, but I'll get back to it. So... Yeah, maybe this Sunday, you know, look on Instagram. I'll tell you when on Instagram in the next few days, though, once it feels like not tacky and awful to resume talking about it. But it is happening. It will be fun. And yeah, like they're really some really cute stuff. Oh, and people have asked if they if you've already reviewed. Yes. Yes. Can absolutely be a part of the giveaway. It doesn't have to be a new review. We appreciate you just reviewing us because you like us. Yeah. And you get rewards. For that. Yes, absolutely. We reward all positive behavior. Yeah. And so, he's got another couple of weeks to sign up for our Patreon for an enamel pin. Yeah. Um, so do that if yes. you want to. Absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, just take care of each other. Yeah, Be man. Kind. Yes. Think of others. Yes. Put a mask on your face if you go out in public. Yeah. Yep. I'm not going to go on more rants, but. No, but please do that. Um, it's a simple gesture, guys. Yeah. It's. And, when I put a mask on my face and I look at you, it means, hey, I really care about you and I don't want to get you sick. Yeah. Um, but if you don't wear a mask, it does mean you're a patriot. So it's kind of like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. And that's it. go to our Instagram if you want to chat with us because we're always on there and we really like it. And it, our Instagram handle is they will kill. Same with Facebook and Twitter, which we're less active on, but we do exist in both of those places. If you want to email us, you can email us at theywillkillpodcast at gmail.com. And you can always check out our website at They Will Kill. Yep. Thank you to AJ Bergantz for our wonderful music and not being a misogynist. Yeah, he's a good dude. He's yep. a good one. Rate, review, subscribe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you do it in the next couple of days, we'll send you our clothes. <laughs> uh, i did i managed to pull out some really cute 
clothing of yeah not soft pants so yeah you're like welcome. yeah sadie's really turning it out i was like oh this is cute uh, this is rachel comey this is like a 300 hundred dollar dress this will be cute it's not nearly as it's expensive but it's not nearly as cute as this shit sadie put together i also took some photos and all my clothes look like slightly jaundiced because <laughs> the walls are yellow in the room i took a photo uh-huh. in so i gotta yep. step on my game that's another reason i've been hesitating to post because i just gotta <laughs> figure out lighting anyway anyway uh and remember um just be good people check in with yourself check your privilege check how you communicate with other people check your intentions when interacting with everybody and communicating with them and just make sure that when you're interacting with other people and yourself that you are meeting them where they are and it's not just about you and that you're practicing what's it called constructive listening what did we Mm -hmm. learn about when we were like five years old use i statements active Active listening thank you fucking practice that shit man if you don't know what i'm talking about google it i think if we all practice active listening we could probably solve a lot of the shit heck yeah right it's just yep. that simple. God. <laughs> we don't need police reform. We need active listening. <laughs> just kidding. We need police reform hard and fast, but that should be part of it. I just loved to think of like the whiteboard with all the police officers, like these grizzled, hard <laughs> LAPD, NYPD, just like sitting there like, I feel embarrassed. <laughs> When you criticize my treatment of people of color. <laughs> uh, we love you guys. We so love much. you so much. You're Thank wonderful you people. Listening. Thank you for being good people. Yes. Or at least trying. Like, we're all trying. Right. Yes. Um, we'll talk to you in a couple days. Yeah, man. Talk to you soon. Talk to you talk, later. Talk to you later. Peace out. <laughs> love you guys. Goodbye. Love you. Bye. Uh, 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 uh,